So let's put it together. Here, we are going to isolate VNets. The requirements are branches need to be able to reach other branches. Branches need to be able to reach VNets and VNets need to be able to reach branches. And the VNets cannot talk to each other. So in other words, they need to be isolated. So as we know, there is the default route table, which is associated to all these branch connections. Now branches, they propagate their routes into the default route table. Let's also go ahead and create a custom route table. And we did that in the previous step. So we'll just go ahead and do that. There is a empty custom route table called the RT VNet here. We'll associate these VNets to the custom route table. And what this means is the VNets are going to know about the routes in the custom route table called the RT VNet. Now, the VNets need to be able to reach branches and the branches need to be able to reach the VNets. Now, the branches are associated to the default route table here. So we will need to make sure that VNets also propagate to the default route table, while the branches, they also propagate to the custom route table called the RTVNet. So what we have essentially done is with a very simple concept of association and propagation, we have managed to isolate VNets. And what did we propagate? We propagated from the branches to each one of these route tables. So when branches propagate to the route tables, the route tables have the routes and whoever needs to reach those branches, they can do so. And for the VNets, it propagated to the default route table only, right? VNet1 propagated to default route table and VNet2 did as well. The VNet1s and 2s did not propagate to the custom route table because if they did, then those specific routes would have kicked in and VNets would not have been isolated.